Hi guys. So good morning everyone. So now we are moving on to the part 6 for this making of Indian constitution. As I said before this is one of the very very important topic for your prelims as well as for your mains and this is important for all the competitive exams too. So let us resume the session quickly without wasting much of our time. Before that let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Sashi Prabha who is presenting you this particular topic. Now moving on. So here the first meeting of the Constituent Assembly took place at 11 a.m. on December 9th, 1946. Now in the last session we have seen that the Constituent Assembly has been put up. The elections have been conducted. The members for the Constituent Assembly have been selected. Now, the next step is the first meeting of the Constituent Assembly. So, when do we have the first meeting of the Constituent Assembly? The first meeting of the Constituent Assembly took place on December 9th, 1946 and 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock. Right. So the time is not important for you guys here. The date is important. So please remember the date. Time is not important. So at 11 o'clock in the morning, the Constituent Assembly meeting has started. See guys, even for today also, the Parliament session starts by 11 itself. Okay, even for today, we are still following the same timing. So, even for the, even when we were in the first meeting of the Constituent Assembly, we had the same time that is 11 a.m. So, you may get a question like, when was the first meeting of the Constituent Assembly? December 9th, 1946 was the first meeting of the Constituent Assembly. Now, how many members attended for the first constituent meeting? Means 211 members attended for the meeting. So the total number of members attended for the meeting was 211. In the previous session, we have discussed about the number of members from the British India and the number of members from the princely states. Okay, so I hope uh, you have seen the part 5 video. In the part 5 video, we had a better explanation about the number of members that have been elected for the Constituent Assembly. How many members from the Constituent Assembly, uh, how many members from the British India and how many members from the princely state. Everything we have discussed. So those who have not followed the part 5 video, please go back to the part 5 video and just have a look at uh, that so that you will get a better idea right so let me explain you for you guys so here the number of members totally we have 389 members and out of 389 members only 11 211 members have attended for the first meeting so here out of 289 members, 296 members are from the British India and 93 members are from the princely states. This point I have discussed in the previous video. Okay, so the point here is out of 389 members, only 211 members have attended for the first meeting. Then what about the remaining members? What happened to these remaining members? Means the remaining members like Muslim League and the princely states, they boycotted the meeting. The Muslim League boycotted the meeting because they are insisting for a separate state that is a Pakistan. Right. So many of the princely state members are also boycotted the meeting. So the, for the first, mem first meeting without Muslim League members and the princely state members, the meeting has been conducted. Right. So the constituent assembly began to function with non-Muslim members and the princely state members. So how many members have attended? 211 members on which day? December 9th, 1946. If you can remember time, that's better. If not, don't struggle for that. 
Moving on, in order to run the constituent assembly, they require a president just like our Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha where we have a speaker. They will look after the activities of the Sabha. They will see what the thing, uh, they will see that the things go on smoothly and to liaison the people to one platform to fulfill the agenda. So just like a speaker of the constituent, uh, speaker of our uh, assembly, the constituent assembly also required the president. Right. So here, so Dr. Sachidananda Sinha was the interim president. So they have elected a president and Dr. Sachidananda Sinha was, Sinhaji was elected as an interim president for the constituent assembly. Now let me explain you what is this interim president means. Interim means temporary. Temporary president was appointed. So who was the interim president? Dr. Sachidananda Sinhaji. Right. So he was the interim president for the constituent assembly. Now, you know what is interim? Temporary president. Why? Why we need temporary president? Why not a permanent president here? The answer is they need some time to arrange for the elections. So meanwhile, they appointed the interim president. Right. So, the first point here is Dr. Sachdananda Sinhaji was elected as an interim president. Right. And after two days, means after two days of the first meeting of the Constituent Assembly. When was the first meeting of the Constituent Assembly? On December 9th. In the previous slide, we have seen. After two days of the first meeting of the Constituent Assembly, that is on December 11, 1946, elections were conducted for the President of the Constituent Assembly. Right. And in this elections, they have elected Dr. Rajendra Prasad ji as a President. So, tomorrow you may get a question, who is the President of Constituent Assembly? Then the answer here is the Ra Dr. Rajendra Prasad ji. So, please do not get confused here. The interim president was Dr. Sich Sachidananda Sinha ji and the president for the first president for the constituent assembly was Dr. Rajendra Prasad ji. Right. So, read the question carefully whether the question is regarding the interim president or the permanent president because one marks makes a lot of difference. Right. So here, so along with the president, they have also elected the vice president also. So H.C. Mukherjee, H.C. Mukherjee ji was elected as a vice president of constituent assembly. Okay, so even the advisor is also required for the constituent assembly and the advisor here was the B.N. Rao ji. So here, if you see the full name of these persons, H.C. Mukherjee. So what is the full name for the H.C. Mukherjee? Let me write for you guys. H.C. Mukherjee. So what is the full name for H.C. Mukherjee? Harendra Kumar. H.C. means Harendra Kumar Mukherjee. So who was the vice president? Harendra Kumar Mukherjee was the vice president. Similarly, I said B.N. Rao ji was elected as an advisor. So B.N. Rao, B.N. stands for Bengal Narsing Rao. Right. So B.N. Rao ji and H.C. Mukherjee. So these full forms are also equally important. Please do not neglect them because sometimes in your examination you may get the full forms. So at that time you should know what is this full forms. Right. Moving on. So after two days of the elections means on 11th December we had an election. After two days of the election, Jawaharlal Nehruji on 13th December 1946, he has moved objectives of resolution. 
the objectives of resolution that was moved by jawaharlal nehru ji has been adopted on january 22 1947 right so i repeat this point objectives of resolution was moved by jawaharlal nehru ji on which day december 13 1946 two days after the election then after almost one month on the january 22 1947 this objectives of resolution was accepted and adopted by the constituent assembly now you have to know what is this objectives of resolution who wrote this objectives of resolution the objectives of resolution was written by motilal nehru ji the father of jawaharlal nehru ji so when he wrote this uh, objectives of resolution if you remember in our first session we have discussed almost first and second sessions we have discussed about this objectives of resolution we discussed that in the mumbai session motilal nehru ji submitted the objectives of resolution there was a discussion that what was the principle of the constitution If we have a constitution what will be the principle of the constitution this was a discussion and regarding the same they have uh, they have appointed a committee the head the head of the committee was motilal nehru ji right so this is also called as nehru report hope you remember all these points because we have already discussed in our previous videos so the same objectives of resolution which was passed by motilal nehru ji was moved by jawaharlal nehru ji on december 13 1946 and it was accepted on january 22 1945 okay now why we are discussing about this objectives of resolution what is the importance of this objectives of resolution in this content means the objectives of resolution is nothing but a modified preamble because we got the preamble from the objectives of the resolutions so we are discussing about this objective of resolution it is very important to remember the date here so whatever the dates that i have mentioned here like december 13 it was uh, uh, it was moved and uh, it was adopted on january 26 january 22 1947 these dates are important because the objectives of resolution has been uh, is a modified version of the preamble the right? preamble is a modified version, version of objectives of resolution now moving on here on the other side the muslim league they continued the demand for the separate state and the separate constituent assembly one side the constituent assembly has framed the preparations are going on for the preparation for the constitution the members have been elected on the other side the muslim league members they have not withdrawn their demand they are continuing the demand for the separate state and the separate constituent assembly in order to resolve all the issues the british government has sent a governor general the governor general who was sent by the british government at that time was the lord mountbatten so the lord mountbatten was sent as a governor general to india now who was the governor general at that time means before lord mountbatten arrival for india who was the governor general means lord bevel lord bevel was the governor general so he was replaced with lord mountbatten again this is important for you lord bevel was the governor general who replaced lord bevel so this can be a question lord mountbatten was the was replaced in place of lord bevel right and this lord mountbatten he gave a plan to resolve the muslim league issue so he gave a plan and this plan was given by him on december sorry january june 3 1947 i repeat this point once again lord mountbatten 
battle gave a plan to resolve the issue he came for the same purpose to india so this plan was given on jan june 3 1947 okay so this plan is also known as mount batten's plan or june 3 plan because it was given on june 3 okay for what he gave he, he put this plan forward to resolve the issues of the muslim league right now moving on so what is this mount batten's plan that we have to see what were the suggestions that were put forward here so the first point that he has put forward is he 